sure. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, now we'll have uh, another interesting session on health, health services utilization. Uh, actually, we got uh, an N number of papers on this particular session. So, um, uh, I mean, uh, just before this also, we had a session on health services utilization. This is just second part of it. Uh, so, a chairperson of the session is Professor uh, Sangamitra Acharya. Ma'am is Professor and Chairperson, Center of uh, Social Medicine and Community Health. School of uh, Social Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Uh, on behalf of IAPS Seminar Organizing Committee, I take this opportunity to welcome you, ma'am. And our discussant is Dr. Uh, Professor Chandrasekhar. Sir is Professor in Fertility Stud Department of Fertility Studies, IAPS. I welcome uh, Professor Chandrasekhar uh, as well. And uh, Dr. Sarang Pedgongar, he is uh, faculty in Department of Policy and Programs, IAPS, as he would be the um, uh, rapporteur of this particular session. I also welcome all the participants uh, and presenters to this session. With this, I uh, invite uh, Sangamitra ma'am for chairing this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Reshmi for uh, introducing me to the uh, to the participants here during this uh, very important seminar which the IIPS uh, as usual has initiated uh, this is an area which uh, which is uh, very very relevant in today's context if one has to understand how pandemic has been spanning itself uh, in last uh, 15 months or so and especially uh, as a premium institution uh, IIPS has a, a very important role to play and it's just uh, about appropriate that IIPS has uh, taken uh, this responsibility to uh, connect pandemic and the population dynamics and host this seminar and uh, as as a chair of this session which is going to deal with uh, care service utilization uh, the the second session of uh, on this uh, area, I I welcome all the participants and uh, I understand the participants uh, uh, will have uh, been given some idea of the time that they would be spending. Rishi, you might want to brief me how many uh, participants are there so that we can allocate the time to them, or you may probably like to keep the time for us. Uh, in terms of uh, because I don't really have the uh, number of participants who are there for for this session. So if that is so, uh, uh, we can uh, kind of begin. I can see Professor Chandrasekhar uh, has joined. Uh, good oh, afternoon, oh, Professor good Chandrasekhar. Afternoon, How are you? I'm good, and it's nice to have you on board. Uh, I was just oh. requesting Rishmi to give me a sense of uh, the number of participants so that we can uh, okay. kind of so, time 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 uh, ourselves. Uh, here it has a four, four paper which I could see uh, yeah. in our session. Okay, so let's see that we will go up to, I mean, five fifteen, right? So five five. So that that is good enough too. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, there is enough time, but uh, uh, trust Chandrasekhar, I'm just trying to figure out is the list of speakers given in a separate yes. uh, list? Yes. Okay, no, no, okay, okay. okay. So I think I'm just. Down, yeah, if you go down that document uh, where okay. you have session listed. Okay, 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 okay. Because I was just missing that out. And I just, okay, okay. So uh, okay. this. Okay. okay, 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 okay. okay. So I was just trying to because uh, okay, I got it. I got it because I was just wondering where are the list of the where is the list of the speakers and it was becoming a bit. Uh, I was I trying to request Reshmi to kind of help me out in uh, getting to the. I got the thing. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Yeah, Chandra Shekhar. Oh, okay. And it's really amazing to have you on board on this uh, during this very important yeah. session. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Rishmi. It's absolutely fine. I got it. Uh, so uh, we do have uh, a good number of speakers and fairly uh, interesting areas that uh, the speakers have chosen. Uh, and as per uh, this uh, uh, list, uh, I do see uh, somebody. Uh, we can we can go by uh, we can go by the. Uh, by the regular uh, list that they are, they've been listed as, right? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so that's how Dr. Akansha Agarwal uh, was kind of trying to uh, upload her presentation. Uh, Dr. Agarwal, if you're ready, we can begin with you uh, because this, to my mind, uh, is certainly a very important and very relevant area that uh, this session is going to uh, span for us. Uh, for the simple reason, when we're talking about healthcare utilization, uh, I think uh, one thing we might, uh, as uh, researchers, as scholars, want to take note uh, for ourselves and also for the deliberation is uh, what is it that we are trying to understand in terms of utilization? Uh, and what is it, therefore, uh, in the ways in which perhaps utilization could be different from access to? Uh, the health uh, service resources, for example, you know, and I think uh, it might be a good idea and pandemic gives us this opportunity to be able to between when we talk when we organization, perhaps the onus is more on on the on the you know users. And when we are saying access, perhaps the onus is as much on the provider as perhaps on the user. So uh, with that note, I would invite Dr. Uh, Kansha Agarwal uh, to share her ideas uh, on this issue with uh, the rest of us. Uh, Dr. Agarwal, the floor is all yours. Dr. Akansha Dr. Agarwal. Akansha thank you, ma'am, ma for that uh, brief introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let me just share the slide. Uh, I hope it is visible. Yes, is my okay. yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 uh, this was done by me, Akansha Agarwal, under the supervision of Professor Khan Amir Maruf. Yes. So, a brief introduction about the study. We all know that COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the healthcare demand as well as supply because of the mitigation strategies which were adopted by various countries. And the health systems were crippled to provide the routine care services because of the sudden increase in demand and the redirection of the workforce towards the pandemic. The institutional deliveries have been on a rise globally as well as in India because of various schemes uh, which were launched by the government such as Janmi Suraksha Yojana in the last few decades. But that rise was threatened during the COVID-19 lockdown. Mm -hmm. Scale birth attendance is a very important measure which helps us to reduce the maternal, perinatal and neonatal mortality but because of the disruption of services, it has led to many unattended pregnancies and increased health risk for the mothers. Pregnant women during the lockdown have experienced difficulties in accessing the services because of so, uh, disruption in the services, transport disruptions and other lockdown measures. And they were also reluctant to come to the health facilities because of the fear of COVID-19 exposure which has led to unattended pregnancies and health risk for mothers as well as for the newborns. The objective of the study was to review the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on institutional delivery care services. Uh, the study population were, were mothers who gave birth during the COVID-19 pandemic Extensive search was done using the PubMed database. Uh, we used the key terms of COVID-19 pandemic with lockdown and institutional deliveries in different combinations for the search and the literature which was published from August to October 2020 in English 
if it pertain to the direct or indirect effects of lockdown on institutional deliveries the literature was then reviewed coming to the results and critical findings a few studies were found which were pertaining to the effect of the pandemic on institutional deliveries a wholesome reduction of around 45 to 52 percent in institutional deliveries during the COVID-19 lockdown was observed in most of the studies. Uh, in a WHO pulse survey, which was done during the lockdown, 53 percent of countries reported partial disruption in the antenatal care services and 32 percent of the countries reported disruption in the facility based birth services. In India, according to the Health Management Information System indicators, for the months of April to June, the percentage of institutional deliveries to total ANC registration has decreased by 4.4% when compared to 2019. That was just for three months. Now we can imagine how much impact it had for over a uh, whole of the lockdown. On your screen right now, you can see one graph and one table. Uh, this was a study which was done in a tertiary care hospital in India. Uh, they compared the number of uh, deliveries during the lockdown with the with a certain time period in 2019. So first look at the graph. The graph is show, uh, showing a comparison in number of deliveries during the pre COVID and COVID time periods. On X axis, we have the number of months during which the study was done. And on Y axis, we have the number of deliveries. The blue color is representing the deliveries conducted during the pre COVID time and the red color is uh, other deliveries during the COVID times. And as we all can see, there is a considerable decrease in the number of institutional deliveries, especially during the initial time of the lockdown. It started increasing uh, from July to August, but it was still lower than the pre-COVID time. In the table, they are showing a comparison in statistics between the pre-COVID and COVID time periods. The number of admissions, if we compare them, have reduced by almost 45%, and so is the number of institutional deliveries. If we look at the three important parameters of high risk pregnancies, ICU stay and mortality, the high risk pregnancies, if we uh, look at the percentage, have increased by 40, from 45% to 52%, whereas the ICU stay and mortality have also seen significant increase during the COVID times. In Pakistan, uh, there was a study done and available data from district health system showed a dramatic drop in access as well as provision of antenatal care services. Another study which was done in Nepal found that the institutional childbirth has reduced by more than 50% during the lockdown. And there was an increase in institutional stillbirth rate and neonatal mortality rate by 1.5 and 3 times respectively. Along with it, the quality of care, healthcare services also decreased by 13.4%. The quality of healthcare was assessed by looking at the umbilical cord care for newborn and the hand washing habits of the healthcare providers. There was another study which was conducted using a tool which is known as life safe tool and in that they made an estimation that because of the lockdown, there can, there can be an increase in maternal deaths per month by 8 to 38 percent across 118 low and middle income countries. So we can conclude by saying that institutional delivery is a very important factor for decreasing the maternal, perinatal and neonatal mortality. But because of the pandemics, the gain which we have made so far have been reversed. Even though the COVID-19 does not have very adverse impact on pregnancy directly, but the indirect effects of the pandemic are catastrophic. And therefore, the emergency obstetric and antenatal care services should be continued with proper COVID-19 appropriate behavior. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. So Agarwal, uh, for uh, keeping up to the time and raising a very important a very issue important. Uh, during uh, the pandemic scenario when uh, uh, maternal health and child health got very, very uh, adversely affected. Uh, although, like you said, you bring out very neatly that uh, uh, there isn't really much of the direct impact, but there are a good, good amount of indirect adverse effects which are going to reflect on as uh, we think about how immunization uh, could be affecting young infants, children, and of course, some others. Thank you, uh, Dr. Agarwal, for your presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would... Uh, it, I would... Uh, I would uh, Consider having all the presentations, and uh, we'd have we'll have our discussant uh, speak about the presentations, and then open it to the floor. Uh, is what my understanding, uh, Dr. Reshmi, am I right? Okay, so I am going to call upon uh, the next uh, speaker, Dr. T. Pugalenti. Uh, who is going to bring up another important issue uh, in context of uh, urban uh, residents and how do how do we see uh, the lockdown impact on uh, the urban residents in Kumbakonam? Sorry for mispronouncing it. How did uh, how do the people who were in urban areas of Kumbakonam got impacted with uh, lockdown? Uh, Dr. Pugalaniti up. The floor is yours. Over to you. And apologies if I have mispronounced your name. Hello, unmute uh, yourself, sir. Pithanga Velu, sir, please unmute yourself. Making presentation using uh, mobile, I think. Okay. Yes, sir. Already uh, he has shared PPT with ICT. So we will. We are going to share their PPT. Fine, so, fine. And he, he okay, will speak okay. on the. Okay. 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 Dr. Pugalenti, I hope you are getting closer to presentation. Okay. Madam, my voice is clear, madam. Yes. You could do the slideshow, please, instead of uh, if uh, whoever is reflecting, the uh, reflecting it on the screen. Could... Yeah, so whoever. Madam, my slides, yeah. so I... Thank you, thank you. Kindly go ahead, Dr. Hello, uh, 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 Thangavelu, sir. Already I shared your slide. You can just continue from the introduction. The screen is already being shared. You can please My start talk. the presentation. Yes, sir, yes, yes sir. please. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay, madam. Yes, yes. I, I'm and, talking uh, about the uh, impact of the corona in uh, Kumbhakonam. Uh, it is a uh, term. And uh, it talks, I talk about the coronavirus when it started, uh, uh, from where it started. It, of course, you know, uh, everything we know. Uh, it was uh, started by the year uh, 2019, by the de month of the December, and later it started to uh, six continents and more than 200 countries. And therefore, the World Health Organization started to give uh, some of the uh, information regarding the uh, corona. And every day they have released various information regarding that. Within the next uh, three or four months of the time,
I think there is some internet uh, internet connectivity issue. Avinash, who is there from IT? Avinash? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, it you, looks. Can, yeah, can you tell him that he can, uh, you know, just keep on speaking and uh, we, uh, we, uh, yes. we should make his video off so that, uh, you know, it is that at least, uh, you know. Yeah, the bandwidth is better than he can speak. Yeah, yeah you're right. Mm, one minute. Yeah, these are the hitches of uh, online presentations. <laughs> This, this impact of pandemic in <laughs> absolutely absolutely the, and urban areas <laughs> yes hello uh, uh p thangwelu sir just continue speaking hello hello yeah maybe he can see the screen uh, on his device and put the video off because you are anyway sharing the screen uh, with us uh, with the presentation yeah. Hello, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, yes, sir. What I have to do? Tell me. Uh, you, you can just uh, continue. And when okay. Uh, okay. the That's slide fine. is over, you just tell me to move next slide so that I will move the slide next. Okay. Do you, you present that? Uh, you I am presenting so... from my end. And uh, okay. when, the, when the slide will be completed, you, uh, so just tell me next so that i will move the slide next okay okay sir I, i'm in the third slide now the reasons were include that overcrowding lack of uh, general medical facilities in hospitals lack of uh, Um, we can't hear you. Uh, we can't hear you, Dr. Pugalidinthi. Uh, Avinash, hello, Avinash. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, if he has some separate device, just he can speak. That's all. Don't need to. I mean, now because it is happening because of this bandwidth. See, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Already, uh, yeah, he, his network is goes, his network uh, is low. This, uh, his network yeah. is low, so he let I him think, speak what he, he, whatever system he has, and okay, you okay. just just uh, you know. If so you I want think to, you, yeah, yeah, you can advise him to use his phone to speak. Okay. And you uh, can share the so slides uh, on your, from your. Hello, uh, P. Thangvelu, sir. Hello. Hello. Sure, if he can hear you, sir, I am hearing your voice. Uh, but uh, you are uh, you are taking uh, means, uh, so many lag of your sound, and uh, we are not audible. Uh, so that. Uh, can you just so continue you... and uh, switch off your uh, switch off your video? Okay. Oh, okay. Switch off. Okay. okay. Switch off your video and just keep speaking on. Keep. Hello. Steady. My objectives are uh, three. One is uh, to understand the socio-economic and demographic characteristics of the respondents. And second, uh, the socioeconomic characteristics and... Uh... Yeah, E-Office may please share the screen. Okay, once we get there. Uh, Avinash, now you can start the presentation. Oh. Okay, okay. Sir, Abila, sir, I will try, sir. I will try my level best. Yeah, yeah. You, you okay, carry okay. on now. You are here. Uh, Dr. Tangavelu, I think you can see your screen now, right? 
We can't hear, is it? Uh, Dr. Tangavelu, can you see your screen? Is it visible now? Yes, yes. It, is it is visible, visible for us. Is it visible? You just carry on now. It is visible for you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. madam. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll tell. Yes, these are my objectives. My, my study area is, this is the what you see in the... Kumbakunam town board, right? Study area, okay. yeah. Kumbakunam town. It is yeah. actually located uh, 270 kilometers from Chennai. And okay. it is often called as a temple city. And mm -hmm. moreover, Mahamaham also held there once in 10 years, 12 years. Forty-five watts, and I'm that forty-five watts. I chose in twenty-five watts, and from these twenty-five watts, we have selected one hundred seventy uh, respondents, which was held between May twenty and May thirtieth of twenty twenty, when the lockdown was started. And then, uh, if you look at this, uh, yes, sir. Next, next, please. Next, sir. Next, sir. Next, please. Next, yeah. Next, also you can come, sir. Next, I look up. Next, sir. Next, please. Yes. So this diagram, uh, this bar diagram will show you what are the how is the respondents socioeconomic uh, characteristics. Of these uh, characteristics, if you see, mostly uh, the male and female almost uh, equal uh, in uh, respondents, and among the uh, respondents, the Hindu are the most uh, and it is covering 50% of the respondents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, among the caste communities, the DC are the covering or it accounts 39 or one, that is 40% of them are DCs and followed by MD. Sorry, we can't hear you, uh, Dr. Thangavelu. It's not audible, madam. No, uh, now it is not. audible. Now it is audible. Okay, okay. Nice, nice, sir. Go ahead. So, okay. Go ahead. Okay, I will keep my mic with uh, closer to my, my mouth. 10% uh, of the yes, people are yes, illiterate. Yes, yes. And... Sir, madam? Yeah, yeah, please okay, go madam? ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nearly 52% 52, 52 of the people are having more than a high secondary level of education and uh, income also higher compared to the other places. And as concerns the family size, almost 38% uh, uh, of the people are having 3 to 4% so, and almost uh, like new Next, please, sir. And then uh, I compare that to the socioeconomic characteristics. Sir, ne next, please, sir. Next, next, please. Another two slides. After two slides. Next. Yeah. And the socioeconomic characteristics, what are the problems faced by these socioeconomic characteristics? I chose, I, I have given a number of problems in the bottom of the slide, bottom of the chart. You can find uh, bipolar, depression, and generalized anxiety, and OC. D and personal disorders and others. I compared with uh, all these um, problems with the socioeconomic characteristics. When you see that uh, uh, the bipolar uh, or separation, they feel uh, separation is the most important uh, factor. So next. Sir, in the next slide, we'll show you the table. The table uh, will explain exactly what is the number, because when you see the chart, it is somewhat uh, clumsy. 
so that uh, the mostly the male are the thing Uh, what is the main problem they have reported? Yes, madam. The, please try to be closer to the mic because I think as yes, you're speaking, you're moving yes, yes. away. <laughs> madam, my mic is closer to my mouth. Okay. <laughs> but I do not know what the problem is. No, I'm sure we can't really figure out, but please carry on. Please carry on. And next, uh, what are the um, problems they faced with the socioeconomic characteristics? Uh, like uh, the, I asked a number of uh, questions like that, whether you have the financial stress or uh, um, that uh, health problems uh, or uh, you have uh, the mental stress and the mental anxiety, yes or no questions like that we asked. Among that, the Hindu female uh, Depression, and they said uh, nearly 82 percent of the respondents said that they are facing uh, depression and uh, 68 percent of the people said that they had a financial test sir uh, you, next to sir next please sir help desk please next next slide next slide oh, yes then we asked the questions like the what are the problems that you have faced they faced a depression and uh, for that they have said nearly 83 percent of the people have said uh, they are facing uh, depression and uh, 70 percent of the people they had uh, financial stress and uh, feel uncomfortable and uh, gender-based violence abused and feel uh, uncomfortable in the home when they were uh, during the lockdown next so next slide sir so please next slides. Yes. Then I clubbed it together for the analysis purpose. I, uh, sir, before slide, before one, before one. The previous one. Oh, yes. Then uh, we asked that uh, I clubbed all together for the analysis purpose. Either you are, when you are going for the binary logistic regression, the independent variable should be either uh, uh, dichotomous nature. Therefore, I clubbed all the problems. Uh, how many problems either one problem they faced or two problem or three problem or four problem uh, like that uh, almost 48 uh, percent of people that have said uh, um, said about uh, they are facing uh, seven problems uh, and uh, that uh, 0 0.9 percent of the respondents facing uh, only the four problems so most of the people are facing almost all the problems next slide sir Next slide, please. Sir, so next slide. Sir, so next slide. Yes. Then I used that binary logistic regression with the all the socioeconomic economic Asha, just show the table before that. Hello. Monthly income are significantly associated with the uh, what is called the, uh, the dependent variable like uh, the problems faced by the people. And then I compared all the things with the uh, the binary regression. And the next slide shows that what are the uh, variables who are uh, significantly associated. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tangvelu. Sorry for all the problems that uh, you've had in presentation due to the internet connectivity, but uh, we could manage to get a sense of your work uh, and your argument that uh, uh, COVID-19 has had a fairly adverse uh, impact on uh, even on the urban population. And we, we've been facing it also as we are trying to conduct this session. Thank you.
touch and we'll come back to during the question answer session. Um, the next presentation is uh, on uh, impact of COVID-19 on TB notification in India. And this is going to be from Java class. Uh, the floor is all yours, uh, Dr. Javed. Javed, sir, just unmute yourself. Yeah. And Hello. make it closer. Yeah, you are audible. One minute. It will screen also. Javed, uh, slides, so can you say move from slides? Take, take one minute. Yeah, I'm making it. Is it visible now, sir? Visible, but you should show uh, slides. Slides. Take it slides and slides. Sir. Yeah, I have make it. No, no. So switch it to the slideshow mode rather than the regular mode. Javed, you need to maximize your screen and then press your phone. So Javed, can you hear us? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Ah, ये cup cup को press कर दीजिए ना cup जो है last में seventy eight percent के बाजू में जो cup आ रहा है. ठीक है, उसको click करिए. तो full screen हो जाएगा. Eighty seven के बाजू में. That's a very one minute. हेलो just just move your slides just move your slides so that i we can see uh, like this way. no no one second uh, you have to uh, just uh, reshare your slide again okay yes ips student you should know these things no sir it is uh, yeah abhi okay okay yeah it's okay right now uh, you just start your presentation okay yeah okay okay Good afternoon, uh, one and all, uh, Professor Sangamitra Acharya, Madam, the Chair Person of the Session, and uh, uh, Professor Chandrasekhar Sir, my teacher at the IAPS, and all other participants. Uh, my presentation is on the impact of COVID-19 on the TB notifications in India. Uh, the overview of the presentation is that we will go through the background, objectives, data and methods, results and key findings uh, as we all know that uh, uh, may I audible to all yeah, yeah you are yeah, yeah. okay, okay. okay. Uh, as we all know that the covid 19 is an infectious respiratory disease identified in Wuhan, china in this some some disturbance is there uh, Avinash, you can you can mute the uh, Thangavellu, okay? It is coming from his uh, mobile. Yeah. Okay. Mute thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, COVID-19, uh, an infectious respiratory disease identified in Wuhan, China, in December 2019, and uh, uh, then uh, WHO named it as COVID-19. Uh, the first case of COVID-19 in India was identified in January 30, 2020 from Kerala 
and uh, then it is spread to across the country and uh, reported in a large number of cases. And then uh, Prime Minister of India, in response to COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, imposed a Janta curfew, and then uh, subsequently announced from 25 March to uh, a, a nationwide lockdown across India. And while this lockdown and other COVID-19 infection control measures remain in effect, such as um, uh, these uh, measures have uh, some uh, negative impact or effect on the overall healthcare services for other necessary healthcare needs, including communicable diseases such as TB. And uh, we know that the tuberculosis is a public health crisis across the world, especially in developing and poor settings. And uh, TB occurs worldwide and remain an important cause of morbidity and mortality in many countries of the world. Uh, we know that according to the global report 2018, in year 2018, an estimated 10 million new TB cases were reported and uh, 2.7 million new cases of uh, total 10 million cases are only from India alone. And uh, uh, further, uh, one third of the total TB cases worldwide are India alone. No, it's not moving. Uh, then tuberculosis and COVID-19, there is uh, uh, many similarities between both the diseases. We know that both diseases show similar symptoms such as fever, difficulty in breathing, cough, etc. and almost transmitted from one to another through respiratory droplets and attack the lungs. And moreover, both the diseases can be identified using the same diagnostic technologies or mechanisms. The objective of uh, uh, the present study uh, in, in the, this background, in the, this situation, an understanding of the uh, situation associated with the TB interventions in the country since COVID-19 outbreak, especially during uh, lockdown and uh, after lockdown, uh, it's very important for policy implications. And hence, the present study traces the number of notified TB cases in India before during and after lockdown was imposed, and then compared with the same period of previous year TB cases. The data uh, utilized for the present study is the real-time figures of uh, TB notifications from the NICSHA web portal, which is under a National Tuberculosis Elimination Program under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The NICSHA web portal provides data for uh, public private health facilities for all the states and union territories and even at the lower level for cystic and uh, uh, tuberculosis units and uh, this use for daily basis. And further, the data for the COVID-19 cases uh, for the study, we have been extracted from the COVID-19 India API website. Uh, for the study, we have done very simple analysis that uh, absolute numbers and uh, mean numbers of daily or weekly and monthly TBK notifications for the year 2020 were compared during the same period of 2019. Uh, moreover, the number of notified TB cases was compared separately during pre-lockdown, lockdown and post-lockdown period uh, then with the 2019. And the percentage change in the number of notified TB cases in 2020 were estimated by comparing the latest number with those of the 2019. And all the analysis is being carried out using Excel or SPSS. Results, uh, this figure uh, gives the uh, trend in the uh, absolute number, weekly numbers of COVID-19 as well as TB notifications. The TB notifications uh, trend is for 2019 as well as 2020. Uh, here it is very clearly uh, demonstrated that uh, before the lockdown, which is 24th March of 2020, uh, there were uh, 
A similar uh, number of uh, TB cases were notified in uh, 2019 as well as 2020. Even in 2020, uh, more number of uh, TB cases were reported compared to 2019. But when the lockdown was imposed, the drastic uh, decrease was reported from around 45 to 50,000 uh, per week uh, uh, TB notifications of TB cases. It decreased to around 15 to 20,000 per week. Then uh, uh, the decrease was uh, always there uh, in the uh, duration of uh, lockdown up to May 30. And uh, after May 30, some improvements were observed in the uh, notifications of TB tuberculosis cases. But uh, even after lockdown was uh, removed, uh, still, uh, the uh, number of uh, cases uh, reported was very less compared to 2019. This is the total percentage decrease uh, we have observed in the case of TV notifications compared to 2019 data. And uh, uh, we have done it for public private, but there is no that much differences in the decrease of TV notifications. Uh, we see that uh, uh, here uh, we have uh, categorized uh, uh, these weeks uh, to make pre-lockdown, lockdown, and post-lockdown periods. The, uh, in the pre-lockdown, uh, we have observed that uh, there is a, a around 1% increase in the TV notification before uh, 24th of March 2020, uh, 1st January to 24th March. But uh, when uh, lockdown was imposed, uh, uh, during a strict lockdown period of 25 March to May 30, uh, we have seen that around 56% decrease was observed in the TV notifications compared to 2019. And even after lockdown was removed, uh, more worry, worrying option, is, uh, worrying uh, uh, item is that uh, even 37% decrease was observed. Overall, 30% decrease were observed during this uh, period up to August 30 of 2020. Then this is the absolute numbers uh, by pre-lockdown, lockdown, and post-lockdown time periods. See, uh, in, in the absolute difference, we can see that in, in pre-lockdown period, as compared to 2019, around 8,000 more TB cases were reported in 2020. But whereas uh, during lockdown, uh, more than 2,80,000 less numbers were reported. And when considered uh, about post-lockdown, even 2038, 2,30,000, uh, more than 2,38,000 cases less uh, reported compared to 2019. Uh, this is the daily uh, mean number of COVID-19 TB, uh, COVID and TB cases. Uh, before lockdown, uh, we can see here, I uh, have made it uh, March, uh, up to 24, 1, and uh, 25 to 30 March 1 category, because uh, in 25 uh, March, the lockdown was imposed. Uh, before lockdown, we see that uh, six to 7,000 per day uh, TB cases were reported in India, the national level. But uh, after lockdown, we see that uh, uh, only around two to 3,000 uh, daily cases were reported. And soon after, when uh, lockdown was removed, some improvements were observed that uh, 5,000 uh, uh, TB cases were reported daily uh, in the month of June. And uh, again, it uh, decreases to 4,000, and further it is uh, decreased to 3,000 uh, daily cases in the month of August. Uh, this is the percentage decreased by all months uh, by lockdown and post-lockdown. Uh, we can see that uh, in the month of March, 21% uh, less numbers were reported in uh, 2020 compared to 2019. Uh, this decrease was uh, high in the month of April, uh, which is 33% decrease. And then uh, some improvements were observed in the month of May and June. But again, a more worrying aspect is that Again, from July and August, we uh, observed that uh, some more uh, decrease was uh, reported. Uh, this is the state level uh, percentage decrease in the notified TB cases. 
the first figure, A figure, is for lockdown period, and then it is uh, B for unlocked period. Uh, we can see that uh, in figure A, uh, around almost all these states uh, have shown that uh, more than 50% decrease was observed in the TB notifications. And then um, uh, only one or two states uh, like Odisha and uh, uh, Kerala, we see that uh, less than 30 percent, though decrease was there, but uh, it is less than 30 percent. And when we see uh, in uh, during a lot period, uh, that is some improvements were observed, but still the decrease was there. And this is related to pediatric TB uh, notifications. Uh, this data uh, is being extracted from the HMIS data and uh, percentage decrease we have been calculated. Uh, this uh, dotted uh, black uh, line shows that 2019 uh, TB notifications data and uh, red shows 2020 notification data by uh, month wise. Uh, here also we can see that uh, before lockdown there was more numbers reported of ch child tuberculosis in the year of 2020 compared to 2019. But uh, when after lockdown was imposed, uh, much uh, decrease was observed. Uh, around 36% decrease was observed in the month of April compared to April 2019. And similarly, some improvements was there. But again, 38% and in the month of August, 53% decrease was observed. Uh, this is uh, uh, one another indicator. Uh, this is DCG immunization and its percentage decrease in the year 2020, BCG, which is uh, uh, protection against tuberculosis for children, uh, is also, uh, uh, HMS data sh shows that uh, uh, larger disruption was there in the uh, year 2020. And uh, in the, especially in the April month, 37% uh, less cases were uh, immunized, less children were immunized compared to April 2019. And uh, the decrease was there up to uh, even up to September level. We can see uh, for the for the absolute number of uh, these uh, differences, we can see in uh, this table that uh, for the pediatric TB, uh, some uh, before uh, as I said before lockdown, there was uh, not any disturbance. Uh, even more numbers were reported in the year 2020. But uh, during lockdown and uh, post lockdown, that uh, reduction of 24% and 36% uh, were observed respectively. In case of uh, BCG immunization also, we can see that uh, mm -hmm. the reduction was there uh, in, even in pre-lockdown, 4% uh, means uh, uh, 2 lakh 13 uh, children less uh, BCG immunized compared to 2019. And uh, during lockdown, 8 lakh 20,000 less or fewer children were immunized for BCG. And even post lockdown up to uh, September, uh, 10 lakh children were, uh, fewer children were uh, immunized for BCG. Uh, if you see that uh, overall for the year 2020, from January to December, uh, more than 30 lakh fewer children received BCG immunization. Then we will do two key findings and conclusion. The analysis presented in the paper demonstrated that the TB identification was badly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to a substantial decrease in the new TB notification in India. The study estimated an overall reduction in the notified TB cases by 30% since COVID-19 outbreak in India during January to August 31st, 2020. Further, the decrease in notified TB cases were much more during lockdown period, which is 56%, followed by post lockdown period. And this reduction was observed in almost all uh, states and UTs. Uh, however, the trend of continuous reduction in TB case detection, even during post lockdown period, is more worrisome. Uh, in addition to TB detection, uh, the HMS data shows serious disruption in providing BCG vaccination which provides protection against childhood TB. Uh, we, we see that 30 uh, lakh fewer children were received BCD in 2020 compared to 2019. 
Uh, it must be noted that TB is the oldest and more killer than the other communicable disease in the world and hamper in measures to diagnose, control, and prevent TB during this pandemic may dampen the government of India's aim to eradicate TB by, by 2025. Hence, the situation warrants continuity of essential TB interventions through the national TB program should be implemented simultaneously with the response to COVID-19 pandemic. Further, effective steps should be taken to remove the fear arise due to COVID-19 pandemic among masses so that the healthcare seeking may be improved, especially for uh, diseases like tuberculosis. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shaved, for your presentation. And uh, it you. really brings out on board that uh, there were other things happening also during uh, the pandemic, which was uh, so highly, uh, I mean, I think we, are, we were all, we've all been obsessed with, uh, uh, with the pandemic and uh, often neglecting many other aspects, like, like you really pointed out very meticulously about what was happening to the tubercle losses. Uh, those of us who were, who were in, influenced, impacted, uh, affected by uh, tubercle losses. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, you, much. Thank you. I would now request our next presenter, uh, Ar Aritrik Das. Uh, who is going to be speaking to us on healthcare seeking behavior during COVID-19 lockdown. And uh, the illustrations are from an urbanized village in Delhi. Uh, uh, it's like a cross-sectional study, uh, which uh, Dr. Ar Aritrik Das has uh, taken on board. Uh, Dr. Das, the floor is yours, uh, and I see there are other co-authors also in your uh, in your work. Uh, kindly tell us about your work and maybe align on your co-authors too, to begin with. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, respected chairpersons and all other attendees and participants. Uh, am I audible clearly? Yeah, you are. You are, and the screen is thank visible. <clears throat> thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Aritrik Das. I'm a second year postgraduate resident from the Department of Community Medicine, uh, Vardaman Mahavir Medical College and Saldhijan Hospital. Uh, so, the topic of the research paper was healthcare seeking behavior during the COVID-19 lockdown in an urbanized village in Delhi, a cross-section study. Uh, my co-authors include Dr. Geeta Pardisi, ma'am, a professor in our department, Dr. Jugal Kishore, sir, uh, the head of the department, and Dr. Yukti Bhandari, po another postgraduate resident from our department. <clears throat> So healthcare seeking behavior is defined as any action or inaction undertaken by individuals who perceive themselves to have a health problem or to be ill uh, for the purpose of finding an appropriate remedy. So the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, that has uh, disrupted the global economy, uh, it has uh, halted the production of raw materials, uh, intermediate goods, consumer goods, it has disrupted the supply chain and the global market. And that impact on the financial uh, sector has trickled down to the livelihood of the people as well. Also, experience from previous epidemics and pandemics have shown us that uh, people tend to lose trust in the healthcare system uh, during this time. They fear of uh, fear getting contracting the disease uh, on visiting a healthcare facility during these times. Uh, so uh, this fear would uh, leads to them not seeking appropriate or timely healthcare uh, for themselves or for their loved ones. Also, this pandemic during uh, this pandemic was so sudden that all our resources were diverted away from the non-COVID services. Like we even talked about TB and immunization and so on. So they've been diverted away to specifically managing the pandemic, and that has uh, that the pandemic itself and the, especially the duration of the lockdown has affected the primary healthcare service delivery and the medicine supply uh, on behalf of the government as well as the prices of medicines in terms of private and the sector. All of this has been affected. And the potential consequences include increased morbidity, mortality, and a poorer health profile of the community. So it is important to study the healthcare seeking behavior of the population during the lockdown and identify gaps that could be addressed if a similar situation arises again in the future. So Aliganj is an urbanized village in South Delhi populated by both prominent residents and migrants. Uh, the area was a containment zone for, for a major period during the lockdown with regular healthcare service delivery being affected at the time. The Urban Health Training Center, which provides regular primary healthcare services for the area, was also closed during this period. 
availability of medicines and other healthcare services from the regular sources was also erratic. So the objective was to study the healthcare seeking behavior of residents of an urbanized village in South Delhi during the COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, so it is a cross-section study conducted at the UHTC, uh, which is under the field practice area of the Department of Community Medicine, the NNC and uh, Hospital for two months. Uh, patients above the age of 18 years and caretakers or guardians of patients below the age of 18 years who regularly sought healthcare services from the UHTC at Aliganj were uh, included in the study, while severely ill patients and patients requiring urgent referral to the higher centers were excluded from the study. Uh, the sample size was calculated based on an estimated prevalence of not taking previously prescribed medications at 50% due to positive literature on the topic at the time, in India especially, and relative error of 15% was taken, and the sample size was rounded up to 200 with 10% non-response rate. Systematic random sampling was used to select patients attending the UHTC during the two months, uh, November and December of 2020. Uh, 40 patients uh, attended the OPD each day, so data was collected from every fourth patient and 10 patients total per day. A pre-designed semi-structured questionnaire was used with questions on social demographic details, patient profile, health-seeking behavior, satisfaction with the current services at UHTC, and perception about the safety and preventive measures taken at the UHTC. Ethical clearance was obtained from the Institutional Ethics Committee uh, of VMMC and Savdajam, and data was analyzed using SPSS version 21. So coming to the results of the study, uh, the table one shows us the social demographic profile of the study participants. So total pop uh, study population is 218, out of which 54.1% was female and 45.9% was, um, I'm sorry, 54.1% was male and 45.9% was female. A majority of our study population were in the age group between 26 to 55 uh, overall, like 25.7% in the 26 to 35 age group. 81.7% of the uh, study population was married. 57.8% uh, of the study population and a family for monthly income between 10,000 to 29,900 as per the uh, classifications uh, from the Kupu Swami scale. 13.8% had a monthly family income of less than 10,000. Uh, looking at education, 24.4% had education up to middle school, 20.7% had education up to high school, while 18.9% were illiterate. Uh, if you look at the socioeconomic uh, status as per the modified Kupu Swami scale, 48.2% uh, of the population were in the lower middle class, while 40.4% uh, came to the upper low, upper lower uh, strata. Figure one shows us the distribution of study participants according to the main source for advice and consultation for health-related issues during the lockdown. So, out of the 218 study participants, 198 had uh, required uh, consultations for health-related issues during the lockdown. Uh, out of which 116, that is 58.5%, accessed an alternate government health facility. 58, that is 29.2%, accessed a private clinic, while only 2%, uh, two uh, study subjects opted for tele teleconsultation. Figure 2 shows us the distribution of study participants according to the main source for medicine procurement during the lockdown. Uh, 88 of the study participants, is 44.3%, bought medicines from private pharmacies, and 78 of them, that is 39.4%, from government supply points that were active during the lockdown. Uh, 15 uh, of the study participants had migrated back and received, uh, got their medications back from the hometown village. Figure uh, 3 shows us distribution of study participants according to the main reason for stopping prescribed medications. So uh, we found that a total of 130, that is 51.8% uh, of the uh, study participants reported to have not taken medication that was previously prescribed for, to them from the UHTC. So the reason for this uh, they cited were uh, unavailability of medicines in the pharmacies. This was 43.4%. Uh, expenses of the drugs, this was 41.6%. And migration to the back to the village where the medicine was unavailable, this was 15%. Figure four shows us the distribution of non-communicable disease patients according to their source of medicines during the lockdown. So the, out of the 87 patients with non-communicable diseases in our study population, 43.7% uh, procured medicines from private pharmacies and 42.5% from the government supply, while 6.9% stopped uh, taking the prescribed medications. Table two shows us the distribution of patients according to satisfaction with services and perception of safety for, of the UHTC Aliganj during the COVID-19 pandemic. So out of the total 218 study participants, 73.7% were found to be satisfied with the current services and 79.8% perceived visiting the UHTC for health-related issues as safe. Among the patients who had access to private clinic during the lockdown, 81% were satisfied with the services and 86.2% were now uh, considered the UHTC as safe. 
uh, among patients who bought medicines from private pharmacies during the lockdown, 77.3% were now satisfied with the services at UHTC and 79.5% perceived visiting the UHTC as safe. So more than coming to the conclusion, more than one fourth of the study population visited private clinics during the lockdown for consultations they would have otherwise obtained at the UHTC. There was a low uptake of telemedicine services and 44.3% of the patients bought medicines from private pharmacies resulting in out-of-pocket expenditure. Unavailability and cost of medicines were barriers to taking prescribed medications during the COVID-19 lockdown. And a majority, however, a majority of the patients returning for consultation at UHTC early bench found the services there satisfactory and safe. This cross-sectional study, however, analyzes only those who have returned to avail services at the UHTC after the lockdown. Uh, it offers a certain uh, perspective of the health-seeking behavior, but a truer picture can be obtained by including those who have not yet returned to avail services at the UHTC. Uh, the study was conducted after the lockdown was over and some recall bias could not be avoided. Government healthcare facilities uh, uh, need to provide satisfactory non-COVID services in a manner that is perceived as safe by the community so that they are encouraged to, they are come to seek timely and appropriate consultation. In case of a similar situation in the future, the supply of medicines from the government supply point should remain uninterrupted to ensure that patients do not stop or alter prescribed medications. Patients, especially those suffering from non-communicable diseases, need to be counseled to emphasize the importance of being compliant to prescribed treatment, and steps should be taken to monitor prices of essential medicines in private pharmacies, especially during such emergencies, to reduce out-of-pocket expenditure for the patients. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Das, uh, for uh, bringing uh, on board to this panel, uh, what was happening in the hospitals because of the scenarios uh, which were all diverted towards COVID-19. Thank you very much. It's almost like listening from the horse's mouth what was happening vis-a-vis uh, -vis utilization of healthcare services. I'm sure there's much to come as you your study takes uh, a shape of a book or something like that. Thank you very much for bringing this on board. Uh, I think these are the four presentations that we have for this session. Uh, and therefore, uh, I would request uh, our discussant, Professor Chandrasekhar, to uh, reflect on his views on the papers that have been presented uh, before we uh, request the report here and, uh, of course, the uh, discussion, because I think we still have about 15 minutes to ask Dr. Chandrasekhar. That's what I would assume. Yes. 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 Okay. I will the take floor. five minutes okay. to uh, summarize and few, I mean, suggestions. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Uh, okay. I think uh, those participants who are new, they should know that Professor Sanmitra was my teacher. I was very <laughs> young at that time. Now I am 46, so you can imagine that. You know, so long <laughs> association. Uh, okay. So now with this, I would like to give few, I mean, uh, my own observation and then maybe some improvement in future if possible. I understand this, uh, this is a new thing. So every, I mean, uh, scholar here or presenter has attempted and I'm challenging to get data. So starting with the first paper, effect of pandemic on healthcare services by Agrawal and Maruf. Uh, we had, I mean, you have uh, taken the inclusion criteria, but, um, I mean, uh, it's it, if you get, I mean, the, the, the studies are limited, but still, if you could have, you know, given some uh, sort of like criteria, like how much was the sample size, whether the study was, I mean, you have conducted a study, uh, with rural setting, urban setting, or anywhere, uh, all those, I mean, backgrounds would have been added and added advantages that, uh, you know, which kind of scenario you are presenting. Uh, so that would, uh, would give more focus on on this uh, kind of and like a review uh, kind of paper or systematic review kind of paper and would lead to some sort of like suggestions and recommendations uh, in your paper that how in future like if there may be more waves of the same pandemic or similar pandemic in future how you know system can deal with that or you know government can deal could have highlighted those things. Uh, now, next paper, which is basically very interesting. Only thing is that the my, I mean, uh, in uh, inference is that you know from this study that yes, there are uh, you know uh, you know clear 
clear indications that the the people who are more social economically disadvantages or population subgroup have suffered more. However, I mean this is what uh, you know Thanga Villu trying to understand that social economic background. But there should have been some previous data or uh, you know some uh, secondary data studies that what were the prevalence in normal time which you could have from large scale survey or maybe similar you know surveys in those areas you could get that idea whether there is some uh, a particular group has been suffered a lot because that that a cross sectionally you have an idea but some sort of like previous you know log prior to the lockdown if you could have given then it could have been clearly make out which group have been uh, you know suffered more and definitely their suffering varied uh, because of like resources or because of like pro, pro, you know the treatment seeking and other financial crisis because you know that uh, there is particular groups have been affected by financial crisis and other things so i mean it would in that way it would have been very very interesting the next study uh, by Javed, which is basically on TB intervention, uh, once again a very good uh, analysis as well as you know national level uh, you know data, but uh, but then again, I mean uh, HMIS gives mainly the figures from the uh, public sector, though the public sector was you know main source uh, at that time in pandemic, but. There are some trust hospital and private hospital must be serving in case of tuberculosis. That data does not come into uh, you know that picture. So how you know you have overcome that uh, limitations because that is a limitations of one of the limitation of HMIS. Uh, otherwise, you know you could have given some systems, uh, you know some sort of system analysis because. You know, I, I was in some for on you know some collaboration with IIT I, on seventh March 2020. I was in uh, uh, Gujarat, and uh, you know, chief medical officer got a call that all the tuberculosis officers and state tuberculosis uh, you know director, tuberculosis director, they have been immediately given the assignment of this uh, COVID-19. All they have uh, stop activity of related to all TB related activity. So, so it is, it is, you have, you should have understood that what it is reporting from the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, people side, or it was a system was closed down. I mean, some sort of analysis being in the TRC, you could have highlight that, you know, what kind of limitation is a system limitations or it was it like, because if you give a department an immediate responsibility, it is very difficult. They do the another responsibility and it's a lesson that you should not close down your uh, you know systems which are already there reporting See. infectious or in infectious disease the final paper which i have uh, uh, is very interesting and it also clearly make out that uh, you know the uh, the suffering as well as the limitations on uh, seeking treatment seeking as well as you know it also tells us that strength that government system were working i mean it immediately were at the stake uh, but in addition to that uh, what we need to make in this paper is an important uh, you know recommendation that and which i like in the end of course it could have been more elaborated that options like telemedicine who were able to access that whether it is like you know person from a normal or an even uh, you know person just having a simple mobile the the migrant which are laborer could do that i mean all those things if you could have highlighted uh, and uh, it would have been very interesting part of this study uh, which i i mean it is very as madam already said this could have been in a story and published if you can highlight few of the point on these issues and then cost of medicine. So in future, if those medicine can be provided at cheaper cost so that more and more people could access because you see that some people could not access due to the cost and the and the medicines of the medicine. Thank you uh, for all the presenters, madam. Thank you for giving me time. Now, uh, you know, you can open for question. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, uh, and uh, thank you also for introducing me and my connection with IITs. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure to get back in any which capacity that I can uh, in terms of connection and uh, you know being with you all. That's always a pleasure. Thanks.
uh, and I really appreciate uh, very much the way you have uh, articulated the presentations and I see uh, it uh, very, very positive for uh, all these authors who can probably take these uh, work, this work further because uh, it's a very good way to make best use of what is available, especially like uh, Dr. Agarwal has already said, like her work being on a, on a secondary data the analysis that you pointed out could have given uh, some more insights, maybe a content analysis of newspaper clippings, which she can still do and uh, add up to, uh, you know, do some value addition to the existing work, because a lot of information, which I think cuts across the four papers, on the uh, on the issues of uh, workers in the informal sector and uh, the move that they had to take because of the lockdown and then uh, returning to their respective places once the un, uh, un, uh, unlocking started happening. So I, I feel that the, the, the scope of bringing that on board is there in all the four papers, whether it's from the perspective of, because uh, reporting of the TB and, and like you very rightly point out, it's more of a systemic issue. Even if I wanted to get, uh, get into the system for care provisioning, I wasn't really able to do that because the system itself had halted when it came to providing those services. Uh, similarly, I think yet another source which could have been tapped for uh, Javed's work, and you can still consider Javed, uh, is the crowdsourced data which was uh, available for uh, for the pandemic, both from the uh, uh, the daily newspapers and also uh, organizations which were uh, which were working on the grassroots level. So I would think uh, the, these are some of the observations which both uh, the discussant and uh, I would uh, want to make in terms of uh, my role in the chair for this session. So uh, overall observations, uh, uh, as much as I would want to place on record, that uh, fairly well uh, argued in terms of each one of you, uh, the way you would uh, you have taken on board from uh, uh, the secondary information that is available to the field based data uh, and making a connect between what's happening in the urban scenarios versus uh, certain other parts of the uh, settlements. So I think it's, it's, it's a fairly well done job and uh, I would be really glad to see this work uh, move forward, maybe in some in some form of uh, printed versions. Uh, with that, I think I would request uh, our reporter to uh, to kind of uh, give us a wrapping session so that we can formally do the closure of the session. Dr. Sarang Pedkankar, the floor is yours. Dr. Pedkankar. Doctor, uh, I can see him on the screen though. Doctor Sarang Pedgaukar. Ah. ah, yes, sir. The floor is yours. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, there were quite interesting presentations, uh, and uh, uh, what we can see is there are uh, two different uh, kind of presentations that were uh, made here. So. In the first paper, there was uh, discussion about the effect of uh, COVID pandemic on the delivery situations, and uh, <coughs> uh, and it, sir, your voice is very low. Can you just be close to the mic? Uh, morning also there okay. was some problem with you. Yeah. Hmm. No, actually these headphones are there, so their voice is. Uh, slightly uh, problematic. Okay. Uh, so actually, all these papers uh, they kind of they presented uh, uh, difficulties presented, and because of the COVID pandemic, the other important health conditions uh, they suffering and uh, uh, taking a toll on the respondents. Uh, so like impact of lockdown in urban residents by uh, uh, pool and uh, So there were the difficulties they have faced, and almost majority of the people. We have to face more uh, all the seven problems that we have, uh, uh, people were subjected to, and particularly the more marginalized class of the society they 
suffered more. And that was very really beautifully presented about uh, the status of uh, TV notifications and the declining uh, the notifications. So there are two important points that okay, notifications were declining, but even if they have locked down, the notifications continued in cases they were uh, continuously coming up. So that was very really rightfully bad in this paper. And there was an interesting paper uh, uh, by uh, Eric Dick talking about the overall health seeking behavior. Uh, so uh, that was also quite interesting paper, and they tried to analyze uh, various uh, aspects associated with overall services that are hospital sector. Uh, so uh, those different kinds of insights uh, that were present, uh, presented in this section, and uh, they really show how the life of people, particularly even in terms of seeking uh, for healthcare, uh, it got affected. Uh, Thank you. Hello, madam. Now, yeah, yeah, she can. Okay, I could. I, I thought we were kind of uh, got disconnected with Dr. Petgaukar. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Petgaukar, for your observation on this session. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just would like to wrap up by just a couple of uh, words uh, to bring on board for us in the session and also those of us who've been interested uh, in the pandemic. Uh, I'm sure uh, we will all agree that this is something which is really unprecedented and has caught us unaware uh, on, all, on, on, on all grounds, you know, be it uh, care provisioning or be it uh, asking care seeking you know on both the sides we've all got uh, caught unaware and therefore it has it is being reflected in almost all aspects of our lives from uh, from school children to the college goers to the universities here itself when we are doing this session we know how uh, how difficult it is to, uh, to you know to do this virtually however much we might want to believe that it's, uh, it's a fairly easy way to do it but I'm sure there are difficulties in this. And therefore, I think uh, under all of these uh, kind of pressures, when uh, scholars have uh, devoted time to look at these issues, one thing uh, which I thought we might, uh, I'm sure the scholars would have taken on board is, uh, especially the ones who went on the field to collect data, uh, how were the COVID norms taken care of in terms of collecting data? You know, uh, you know, you had to protect yourself as researcher. You had to ensure that the researchers, uh, your your respondents, are equally safe. So I'm assuming that that care was taken, uh, especially those of you who were on the field. Particularly, if you look at uh, Dr. Das's work, you know, you you've been con uh, constantly exposed uh, to 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 the infection if i can use that word and amidst all of that amidst uh, amidst the uncertainty of uh, care uh, provisioning amidst amidst the uncertainty of the way uh, the virus was uh, panning itself uh, i think uh, this is something wonderful that each one of you has happened to put it together and i would really look forward to a consolidated version of all of this i'm sure dr chanshekar will probably have a better idea on this, whether the Institute is planning to bring it out in, in form of any publication or not, because to bring on board that uh, so much of attention was almost all attention was diverted towards COVID, leaving aside what is maternal and child health. I mean, all of our policies have been rested on maternal and child health since I'm, I'm sure ever since we've started bothering about population and development connections. So to divert all of that from there, to forget about uh, what is happening to the tuberculosis affected individuals when we know we are the ones who kind of uh, host, have the majority of uh, affected people. You know? So uh, all of that probably brings on board the concern which I initially started uh, in terms of utilization versus access. So uh, I'd leave, uh, leave uh, uh, this question to all of us uh, do we uh, bring on board this idea of when we are uh, when we are talking of utilization, 
and uh, seeing the trajectory from the other side vis-a-vis -vis access. So it's not only uh, the user's responsibility, but it's also the concern of the provider, and that's where the access becomes relevant. Uh, I would think, Reshmi, that's uh, all from my side as, uh, as, uh, as the host or the chair of the session, and uh, I see the time is also done. Uh, so, do we close the session? Uh, Reshmi, do you have anything to say here? Okay, so maybe I'll switch over to Dr. Professor Chandrasekhar. Uh, uh, we can close yes, the session. Yes, or... yes, we can close that session, ma'am. Uh, yeah. thank, thank, thank you, thank you, oh. uh, Dr. Sanmitra. Thank you for chairing this session. Thank you so yeah. much. It's and, lovely to and, connect and it. Ma ma madam, ask a question that, uh, you know, bringing some volume. I think uh, Madam Anisha can give an idea. Yeah, right? we, we will try. We will try to bring some book or some issue or some su summary, at least summary of the seminar. I was thinking we can take out summary of the seminar and book will take little more time. So uh, we can yeah, have summary sure. or something like that. Sure, okay. sure. Absolutely. And thank yes. you, Sangmitra, for giving us time as thank well you. as seeing you on the screen. <laughs> I know, I know. That's the positive side of COVID-19. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will close the session. Eh? Okay. Let me close the session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank for you your all participation. for your participation.